Should I hold your hands? You can. When God wished to describe the beauty, unity, and completeness of the church and to reveal to mortal understanding the, the joyous estate of his people, he chose to picture a wedding, a devoted bridegroom with a spotless glowing bride. We have gathered to share in the joy of these who have come to join themselves in the image of God's perfect everlasting love. We've gathered here to wish for them a union which shall rejoice the heart of God and reflect his love before mankind. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Can you step forward there? Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. So grateful, Lord, for this union that you're bringing together here today. Lord, we know that with it, Lord, you're going to bring incredible blessings, Lord. That God, you're going to do miracles. You're going to do wonders. And we're excited to see this, Father. And speak your blessings over them, God, in every fashion, Lord. Blessings over them as individuals and blessings over them as a couple. Blessings over their home, Lord. Blessings over their path and all that they set their hand to, God. God, you will be there. You'll be the strongest one in the midst of them. And that you'll bless them as they pursue you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This marriage in which you come to be united is a holy ordinance. Instituted by God at creation honored by Jesus Christ at the wedding of Cana, and commended by the Holy Spirit as evidenced in the writings of Paul, it signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church. The Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. In making the marriage union a type of Christ and his church, God has made known to you the tenderness with which he looks upon this moment. He has made you aware of your blessings and your obligations to Him and to one another. He has spoken the substance of the marriage laws. Let the wife reverence her husband and the husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it. Zion, do you take this woman to be your wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I do. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to her as long as you both shall live? I do. And Hannah, do you take this man to be your wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Do you promise to obey and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourselves only unto him as long as you both shall live? I do. Now the bridegroom and the bride will read their personal vows to each other. Hannah, there was a time not so long ago that you were a dream in the heart of a little boy. A boy that knew that one day he would be married and he would strive every day to become a little better than he was the day before, so that he might become someone that she deserved. He would look this way and that way for guidance, 
or someone to help him steer his little ship of dreams to find her distant shores. Sometimes he caught a glimpse of what he thought was you in a far off land, and like the waves he would rise with elation at the thought of finally making it into your arms. And like those waves he was crestfallen time and again when the shore shimmered away like a mirage without an oasis. He grew a bit and learned from his heartbreaks, but felt he could barely hold on to his resolve. Wouldn't it be so easy to let go of the wheel and wander aimlessly about the ocean, never again seeking that which he longed for? Perhaps the ocean was where he should stay. Though the, des though the desire to abandon hope was strong, I plotted course again and steeled myself the best I could against the wind. It was your shore in the distance I saw. I knew it this time. Not by sight did I see you, but in a dream. A dream I had all but forgotten, but it was still there. You were still there. Hannah, you are the distant shore. You are the dream in my heart. And even while we may soon be living our dreams together, I promise to always be dreaming of you. Sigh. <laughs> Every day that I've known you, I've grown deeper in awe of you and further in love with you. You are everything I asked the Lord for in a husband and a life partner, and even more. Your heart is steadfast, tender, and burdened for what burdens the Lord. You refuse to allow life, ugh, difficult life circumstances to hinder you, but instead you have allowed God to use you for his glory, and it has made you strong, but not too strong, because you realize that every single day you need the grace of Jesus Christ to lift you up. That is one of the things I honor and respect in you the most. Your selflessness is beyond measure. Always putting others before yourself, no matter the circumstances, and committed to doing things for the good of everyone and not just for your own gain. You inspire me. You inspire me to love harder, adventure farther, and to grow even closer to God. You are a constant reminder of the unending love God has for me. Today, with the understanding of the immense decision I am making. And with the help of God, I promise you my deepest love, my fullest devotion, and to be your help me. When you forget how great you are, I vow to remind you. I promise to learn and adapt so that in the times of change, whether it be good or bad, prosperity or poverty, illness or good health, our love and the love of God will remain at the heart of our marriage. I promise to slay the pieces of me that are prideful and selfish for the freedom to love you. I pray to be the woman that God intended for you. I will not let a day pass without telling you I love you. You have my heart, and with my entire being, I promise to be faithful to you in our future family. And I will walk with you hand in hand wherever God leads us. Know that I love you, and that I am yours now and forever. <laughs> Will you please join hands? In the name of God, Zion, will you repeat this vow after me? In the name of God, in the name of God, I, Zion Melchizedek Trigg, I, Zion Melchizedek Trigg, take you, Hannah Elizabeth Myers, take you, Hannah Elizabeth Myers, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until God by death separates us. Until God by death separates us. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And Hannah, would you repeat this after me? In the name of God, I, Hannah Elizabeth Myers. In the name of God, I, Hannah Elizabeth Myers. Take you, jo Zion Melchizedek Trigg. Take you, Zion Melchizedek Trigg. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. 
to love, to cherish, to love and to cherish, and to obey, and to obey, until God by death separates until us. Until God by death separates us. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. You will now exchange rings to seal these marriage vows as a symbol of the lifelong commitment and abiding love which you as husband and wife have promised to each other. Zion, you may place the ring on Hannah's finger and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. May it ever remind you of my unending love and devotion. May it ever remind you of my unending love and devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hannah, you may place the ring on Zion's finger and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. May it ever remind you of my unending love and devotion. May it ever remind you of my unending love and devotion. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For as much as Zion and Hannah have consented together in holy wedlock and witnessed the same before God and this company, and have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus again. Grateful, Lord, for what you have done this day. It's amazing, God. We speak your blessings over them. That God, your abundance, Lord, will reside in their home, Lord. Your abundance, Lord, will reside in everything that they set their hand to. That, Lord, their home will be full of cheer. It'll be full of joy. It'll be full of laughter. It'll be full of peace. It'll be full of comfort. It'll be full of little voices. That, God, you'll bless them immensely. And we ask this in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Zion, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> 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 Ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I now pre you guys oh. <laughs> I, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Trigg.